Hey, welcome to Two Non Doctors. I'm Liz Mealy. I'm Maria Shahada. How are you doing, Cupcake? Oh, I'm all right. How are you doing? We're two girls that just had a birthday, two Geminis that just got older. Just got older, even though our hair doesn't say that. No, hello. Yeah, we both we both went like, what? I'm going to kindergarten. <laughs> I was watching Love on the Spectrum and one of the girls' hair like inspired this. I thought it was so cute. I do like it. She had bangs though. Like she had like really cute bangs and then two little poofs at the top of her head. And I was like, I'm doing that. <laughs> This actually looked really cute yesterday, but it's it's I saw it on the interwebs. It's like a little dunk a dunk thing here, and then you do it again, you do it again, and you do it again. So in the back, it actually looks cute. But then I slept, and abs attacked me, so he actually broke two of the rubber bands. So it's chaos back here, oh, just wow. full, full <laughs> bedhead kitten attack all the way in the back. I have to redo it, but oh, okay, that sucks. I'm not, I'm just not gonna turn around. Don't let me turn around and ruin all of this. Um. And I won't sing, don't turn around. <laughs> yeah, good, good. No, I appreciate that. You know, we can't afford <laughs> whatever kind of royalties we'd owe people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've been traveling and then driving again. I miss driving because I like singing in my car, but I feel like I've I've lost something. I feel like my time in London not driving has, like I'm out of practice and like my voice isn't there anymore. And not that I ever had a great one, but it's definitely like not even as close to what it used to be. So do you like, like for me, I always forget about the radio as like an option. Yeah. yeah. I haven't listened like, to the radio in years. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll get, I'll, especially if I like borrow my brother's car or something, I'll get in the car and I'll be like, what, do, what are people doing here? Like, like I just have this moment where I'm like, or like rent rental cars, which is so funny because half the rental cars I go in still have that, like they should have that adapter thing, right? Like every updated car should have the USB adapt when they don't. And it has to be like the cigarette or the, what do you call it? The thing that That's makes crazy. it burning. It's That's crazy. crazy. And you're like, is this car from the forties? Like I should get a discount. They've even updated UC USB since then. Like, so it's like, which USB should be the question? Not yeah, <laughs> cigarette. Absolutely. absolutely. Um, but yeah, no, I do find myself, I, I just have a moment where, and I drive probably more than you do, where I'm just like, there's this adjustment of like, what do I, what do I do? What do I touch? How does it work? Yeah. Oh man. But I, I love, I love a good drive. Oh my God. I miss it. Yeah. Well, not, not anymore with gas prices. Like, I remember how many times we would just like go for a drive. And now I just think about how that's taken away from everybody. Like you can't afford to just have a breather and go for a drive or like a useless errand that you're just doing just so you can get out of the house. Yeah, I know. I know. I can't do that in London anyway. So I'm used to that, but fuck you, Russia. But also like, I don't think it's Russia because my brother was telling me that really the gas, the, the oil companies are using it as an excuse because we only get 2% of our oil from Russia. So it shouldn't be hitting us as hard as it is. So they're just using it as as an excuse to, to hike to be everything. Honest, I don't remember people talking about gas prices in the UK like this. And it's just crazy how I'm like, I guess for, I, I thought just the US was just more dependent on Russia than the UK was or something. Like, no. I couldn't understand. Um, it should affect us a little bit, but we're talking about 30 cents. We're not talking about double the price of the gas. It yeah. really is. And they're saying that even for inflation, because inflation is a thing, all these companies that wanted to raise their price are raising it now because they can be like, it's inflation when really they just wanted to raise their price. So really, because we don't have laws on fucking over consumers, we're just getting fucked. And it's just, that's the kind that's of- like how all these companies are like, due to COVID, our uh, customer service agents aren't as, like, we don't have as much, like, they're just basically using poor customer service like COVID is the excuse for poor customer yeah. service. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I would say that there's some, because people can't seem to keep people employed because they don't pay them. So I don't have any sympathy or anything. But like some of that is true where like, I remember like I released my albums on CD Baby and they were like, hey, uh, we lost our staff. Some of them are at home. Some of them just didn't, never came back. Like, give us a second. And that I, I, I somewhat get, but you know, two years into this you know maybe give somebody a wage and like some vacation time like do what you got to do to keep to retain employees like I don't at, at some point it's you yeah absolutely I can't help but think you're 
I just, I just, you just look so, like, you just look like you're off to see the wizard. <laughs> <laughs> if you saw my full outfit too, if it, it being black, I realized, cause I'm wearing like, kind of like the skirt situation and like a little crop top. You see like this much of my stomach or whatever. I wear crop tops too. Yeah. I'm just <laughs> like, like, oh like, my God. Like the gateway crop top. <laughs> exactly. I was like scandalous, you know, like you just know where to cut if you're going to cut me in half. Um, but um, uh, anyway, I wore this yesterday to a show. So what do we do? We, I wore it for like an hour. So then I was like, well, this isn't used. So I'm going to wear it again. And I have a new neighbor. So she saw me taking out the trash and running to my shows last night in this outfit. And then this morning I got up and I had to go to the doctors and I'm wearing this outfit again. I was like, she absolutely thinks I'm a waitress. <laughs> like, there's no <laughs> way it's all black. This little thing, like I buy, there's nothing. And it's funny. And after I had that thought, I was like, oh, I normally don't. I just realized I normally don't dress in all black because once, not once, it happened a bunch of times, but the one time that it was important, I was doing a Letterman audition, what, 12 years ago. And I was, a, I was wearing all black and they're announcing my name and a guy grabs my arm and he goes, hey, sweetie, can I get a rum and Coke? And I literally went, Oh my God. And I literally went like this. I like looked at his hand and I took my arm away because they were literally announcing my name. And I stood up there and I was like, to the guy that ordered a rum and Coke, I'm not your waitress. <laughs> <laughs> I had a big laugh. And then I did the rest of the audition. Went well, never got Letterman. Um, it was my <laughs> it was all back too. But it was like, it freaked me out. And I was like, you can't wear, you can't look like this and wear all black at a comedy club. That's on yeah. you, Liz. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Absolutely changed the way I dress. It's because like because it was so. Yeah, when my friend Olivia was um, she was doing something for the Leno show, and so they flew her out from London to LA, and she was staying at this hotel in West Hollywood. She was like, "Come visit me." Um, I pull up in my my little what was it nineteen ninety seven Camry? I can't remember what year it was. Old ass Camry, busted like side view mirror hanging off. Just like this thing has been in so many accidents and like I pull up and the guys like go like uh, the employee parkings around the back, the garage is back. <laughs> I was like, I'm, you need to valet this month. I'm, <laughs> I'm a guest. I'm a yeah. guest. <laughs> <laughs> and there was no car door handle. I was like, you got to roll down the window and reach in from the inside and open the the, the driver's side door because there was no handle. Do you remember that in my car? I, like, I also like remember. I re also remember your side side view mirror hanging and being like, "This is how you die, Maria. Like this <laughs> needs to be fixed." And you're like, "No, it works." And you're like, "It's like a limp dick." You're just like. <laughs> the reason it worked, and I don't know if I realized it at the time, is that people see your car like that and they steer clear. <laughs> they really do. Dude, I, that it's actually a hundred percent true. Cause I'll be like driving and I'll see somebody in the whole side of their car is missing. And I'll be like, that's not somebody I want to be next to. That's <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. You steer clear. You're like, you, you don't, do not have don't, your shit together. I don't know what's I don't trust on. that. Yeah, yeah. I see that. And I think this is someone that doesn't care about their car yeah. and uh, makes mistakes and I yeah. don't want to be around them. <laughs> I want to drive old vehicles. I'm going to make mistakes. I don't want to like really be I don't want to drive a nice car until I can afford uh, fixing a nice fixing car. Fixing it. Absolutely. And it's interesting because my dad, my dad was the, like, my dad has a job, works, blah, blah, blah. Mostly me and my siblings and my mom would get in accidents. I don't think my dad got into too many accidents. We would hit a pole and we'd be like, sorry, dad. And then he would go get it fixed. And keep in mind, like, it was a visual, but like it, nothing, it worked. Cause like, even yeah. right now I have a huge dent in the side of my car. And I remember my mom saw it recently and she was just like, when did that happen? I was like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I, couldn't even, I think like three years ago, like it, it works. What's the pro? It just looks shitty. I don't give a shit yeah. or even better. So we've had a bunch of storms um, in the city and where we're parked is a lot of trees and all these like tree jizziness. I don't even know what it is. Like, it's like, it's not exactly flowers, but it's not leaves. It's like little I know what you're talking about it's all over my table at home now like it's just like what is this tree shit yeah I couldn't, I couldn't tell you what it is but they're brown and they're everywhere so I have to move my car every week for street cleaning and I that's how I've kind of pretty much met all my neighbors so um this woman Kara is 
taking like, you know, what you do to scrape your, um, the little you know, windshield. And I was like, oh, that's, that's smart. You're smart. And then, but I didn't do it. And then the next week I see my other, my other neighbor, Eric doing the same thing. And I'm like, I just look like trash, not doing this. And I was about to do it just to like, just like that, like keeping up with the Joneses don't look like a hobo car person. And then like super late being inspected, like really, really late. And all the little jizziness stuff is covering up the sticker. And they sometimes will, like, car, cops will just pass by and give you a ticket. Cause, and so now I just, I'm not cleaning my car. So nobody can see that my sticker is expired. And that's, that's where I am an adult. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like that side's dented and it's expired and inspection. And I'm just like, that's me out there making great choices. <laughs> Thank you, nature. <laughs> yeah. No sense. Yeah, let's do it. Um, to all our Patreons, uh, everybody that supports us, we are beyond grateful. You guys are amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, if you don't know and you want to become a Patreon, um, you can uh, get weekly bonuses. You can get monthly bonuses. You can get stickers. You can become a Google guest. You can control our Googles. Um, you can get my book. You can get Marie's album. You can get my albums. You have all these fun benefits um, for uh, supporting us. And you can do that at patreon.com slash two non-doctors. That's the full word doctors. Yeah. And you can follow us on the socials. You can follow us on Instagram at two non DRS, but on everything else, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube at two non doctors, the number two full word doctors. And if you're having time and you're feeling kind, please leave us a rate and review on Apple Podcasts because it helps us out a lot. It helps us get seen. We love it. We share it. Um, and thanks to everyone who's left reviews so far. Uh, personal announcements. Um, I'm, yeah, my album's out. You know this. I'm saying it again. Uh, it's on Bandcamp, mariashahada.bandcamp.com. And I think you can get it on Apple Music and um, Deezer, just not Spotify because fuck them. And um, they suck. <laughs> <laughs> um, and as far as shows, I'm doing Royal Albert Hall. Like, I don't need to, <laughs> I'm not doing like the big hall. I'm not doing like, like um, Bill Burr special Royal Albert Hall. Um, but there's a room yeah. in Royal Albert Hall that I am doing. So it's fun to be like doing Royal doing Albert Hall. Yeah. I've July. had that. I, what, when is it? July 1st. July 1st. Uh, do you know how big the room is? No. It's so funny because I've done some of those where there'll be these big ass theaters we're like you know it's like let's say it's five thousand people or something like that or ones that are like twenty thousand, and then you find out that there's like just like almost like an employee room that they put some chairs in and that's where you're playing you know like yeah i'm in the same sister effect i'm doing the employee cafeteria at royal albert hall <laughs> I'll be in the parking lot, um, just whispering my jokes to people as they're trying to park. I'm going to come up and they're going to be like, employee entrance is out back. <laughs> no, I'm performing here, motherfucker. <laughs> no, I'm a, I, I work here, but only today. Um, um, I am pretty much completely finished editing my special. I'm still waiting to figure out where it's going to be when it grows up. Um, I'm hoping it will be out by August. That's that's the dream. Yay. Um, what's nice is both my friend that edited it, who um, edited, 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 edited it. It's so edit, much fun to say. Edited it uh, last time, my last one. And my brother-in-law, um, um, my sister, uh, Emily's husband, uh, always cuts up my tracks because I turn it into an album as well. And they both sent me like really nice notes in the middle of them, like editing stuff, being like, this is your best one. Like it would just Aww. felt... You know what I mean? And like Zachary is like just a sweetheart of a human and is just lovely. And he came to the taping as well. But like my brother-in-law is like, he's super into music and he's just like, he's very much, he likes what he likes and he doesn't give out compliments often. And I have to say, warmed my little sister-in-law heart. It was like midnight. He's like, Hey, I'm almost done. I'll send you the cuts um, soon. And also this is, I'm really proud of you. And I was like, shut up right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, stop it. Um, and that's when you start to realize people that rarely give compliments when they do hold a higher precedent. Like, you know what I mean? Like they hold a higher value and you're like, that's not sh how it should be. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. But, well, I mean, yeah. Cause like, it, it's just, um, if, if I, you know, if, if I was like, I like your special and I love the pillows on my bed right now. And oh my God, I love grass so much. It's so much fun to, like, <laughs> have it between my feet <laughs> you'd be like okay but okay. someone who hates everything or even just doesn't bother complimenting and then it's just yeah. like 
I should say, I love your special. It's like, wow. Yeah. Well, I don't think you've ever said anything nice to me. Yeah. Um, I was in, uh, I was actually in CrossFit yesterday and we had something that had to do with balance. And my coach, who's my friend was like, Liz, and he says something and I didn't hear it. And I was like, what I do? And he goes, no, it was really good. And I was like, oh, you've never been nice to me. So that's not, I didn't, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like your first, always <laughs> reaction wasn't like, thank you. Firm or how I did something. So I did, I'm just shocked by this compliment and I will hold it close to my heart, Mike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, my little baby announcements. Um, I'll be in DC at the end of July. I also have a weekend in Atlanta. Then um, August, I'll be in Pensacola and Panama City, Florida, and then I'll be in San Francisco as well. I'm also thinking about trying to do like a pop up, like new material thing in L.A. because I'm going to go visit M with my mom. But I don't know if I want to do that. Wait, wait, I'm trying to popping it up. Is someone else putting on the pop up? I would ask. Yeah, like I would ask them and I would have like a cheaper ticket and I would just try to do all my new stuff. Oh, I see what you're saying. You throwing on a new material thing in LA. Yeah, you should do it. Why? Absolutely. When are you going to LA? Um, I think I have to, cause there's, I'm waiting to hear about an audition thing that I did, but um, it should be early September. I think I'll be there okay. for a week. Sammy's coming. My mom's coming. Uh, M lives there. I was thinking then, about going um, in October, um, but um, that, that is not September. Well, I mean, I could change it cause I didn't, it was arbitrary. Um, give me like a, a week. This is a private conversation we're having in, uh, with everybody, but give me, give me like a week and we can, I can tell you the exact dates. <laughs> um, Everyone's coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, guys, this is when me and Maria are going to be, uh, uh, I like how we just have full friendship conversations on this. Okay. Fan mail. Um, yes. Okay. It was a YouTube comment, um, from mega 12. Uh, yeah. The not knowing your birthday was a thing where my family was from in Portugal, mostly because people didn't want to pay the late fee from registering their kids' birth certificate late. Lol. So my grandpa's birthday was later than it actually is. That's really you know, crazy. Yeah. You know, it's really crazy because I posted that clip that we talked about of like your mom not really knowing her birthday and how that's like an ethnic thing. And I had four different friends message me and say, yeah, like either my parents don't know their birthday. Like it seems across really? the board because uh, two of them were Indian. Um, you're Egyptian. They're from Portugal. Um, somebody else was Asian. Like, so, you know what I mean? Like it's, I find that hilarious That's that so it funny. is, I, I, one never heard of it, did not know. And then, then I was just like, oh, we like opened up a, a, a wormhole of everybody being like, yeah, my mom doesn't know her birthday either. Oh, wow. That's so cool. Also, I didn't know there's a late fee. You have a late fee for not registering your kid? Apparently in Portugal. I mean, that makes sense. Because I think in the UK, you actually have 30 days to name your kid. But like, oh, they probably sense. charge you like, yeah, fee. Because like, at some point you're going to have to decide, right? So if, the, if there was no penalty, then people would be like, I don't know. They're like three years old now. Um, so yeah. I just call them three. <laughs> it's like, you know. Just call them three. Um, also, it makes sense that you have to register them so they know you didn't kill them, like so that they know that they're a person and that they're alive and, you know, they want to get their taxes eventually. And Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they want to get their taxes. About your kid eventually being an adult and pay paying taxes. <laughs> but that's where like it gets interesting because like I was watching a documentary about like the the consequences of the only having one kid in China. And when they had a girl, like, you know, sometimes they put the girls up for adoption, you know, other sad, sad things, but sometimes because they were be penalized for having more than one kid, they just never registered that kid. So they have a kid that doesn't go to school, a kid that doesn't like literally a kid that's off the map. Oh my God. And so you're like, which is crazy. Like there's kids that have no, like, I don't know if it's social Good. security numbers in China, but like they have no yeah, like nobody knows that they exist. That's must. That's so crazy. Oh yeah, everything about fucking China. I just don't understand in what world they thought that was a good idea. You can only have one. We want it to be a boy. Cool. And now, and now there's no women, and they're just like guys. We have nobody to marry. Yeah. Well, why didn't you think about that when you just said that women weren't didn't matter? Anyway, I'll go on a crazy. Yeah, I'm gonna. Know. I'm gonna have to cut you off there. Yeah. No, um, I'll, I'll cut myself <laughs> off. I'm just gonna shake the computer. And be like, yeah. How did that not? We don't have value and now you have nobody to have sex with. Like, I'm not China. <laughs> um, uh, 
Mega 12, thank you for sharing. Thank you. Um, Google's. Yeah. Uh, you want to go first? You Mine's go? involved. I'll go first. Mine's okay. quick. Um, so I feel like I mentioned it. I started reading this book, started reading this book like a couple months ago. I'm very slow called uh, Fix Your Period. Yeah. Um, because I just felt something was off. And in general, I have hormonal, hormonal acne, which I, I know, and I know my hormones were off, but I just, I felt, I don't want to go into details, but my body just wasn't doing well. And I felt like there was something hormonally off. So then I went to my gyno and I was like, Hey, could I be, um, insulin resistant, which is something I brought up before. I was like, I just feel like there's something off. Is that crazy? I know I'm a pretty healthy person. And some of the requirements of what insulin resistance would look like, I don't fall into, but I just think I might be insulin resistant. And I think there might be something else wrong. And she was like, absolutely not. She's like, we could do a blood test, but honestly, if you think you're insulin resistant and then some of the other things that you say are going on, you might have polycystic ovarian syndrome. Hmm. And I do, I do. I have polycystic ovarian syndrome. How did you find out you have it? Did they do tests? Yeah. So I re I, I matched a bunch of the symptoms and then they, they sonogram and there's cysts all over my ovaries. Super fun. You know, back in 2016, I found that out about myself when I had health insurance briefly. Um, they did like a ultrasound. And then she was like, yeah, you have like some like, uh, I remember the conversation is going, you have like shit all over your ovaries. But I don't think that's what she said. I don't think that's what she said either. It's a lot. Of, it's a lot of little cysts. That's and I remember like cysts are like, yeah, like something. And I was like, that sounds bad. And she was like, it could affect your um, uh, abil- like uh, fertility. And I was like, yeah. that makes sense. But um <laughs> You know, I didn't do anything about it. You should. And I'm going to yell at you in a second. Wait, why? Okay. Be- okay. So in general, and that's what I really like about this book, lady listeners, um, your, your hormones are very much linked to your gut. So I've had gut issues most of my life. So um, to, to balance your hormones is to also help your gut. And when you, your hormones are off, whether it's because of birth control, whether it's because of gut issues, whatever the reason is, it affects your entire health. So to ignore the fact that you technically have a hormonal imbalance because of this ovarian, you know, the polycystic, whatever, um, it's going to have problems in the long run. So you could end up having diabetes. You could end up having forms of ovarian cancer. You could end up um, be, you know what I mean? Like, doesn't matter that you don't want to have kids. Like, I honestly think this has been because I kept joking. Maybe I can't have kids. I've never made a mistake and I'm not, you know, the best. Um, and now I can see that I probably, and that's kind of the funny part is I still don't want to have kids, but you still have to balance your hormones because it's, it's about your overall health as a woman. Yeah. So you absolutely should try to fix it. And we will talk about that later. Yeah, but like I did, I mean, you know, I used to be a lot unhealthier um, back then. Well, I mean, I guess not a lot unhealthier. Like I was always into exercise, but I I drank more, smoked, um, I quit all that. So I kind of have been working on myself in the way that I can, like aside from taking any kind of pills. Um, When's the last time you went to the gyno? I mean, it wasn't that long ago. Like I take care of myself. I don't, I'm not saying you don't take care of yourself. I'm saying that overall, if it's still, and they basically say it can't be cured, but you can at least get it under control. Although this book basically says you can maybe get rid of it. Can I define polycystic ovarian syndrome for the people? Oh yeah. Cause that was my Google. I love that. This, inflam- this is great. I, oh, you matched my book. Um, okay. PACOS, I think is P P C O S. Okay. Th- this inflammatory endocrine disorder prevents the ovarian follicles from reaching their ovulation stage, causing significant delays in ovulation or even preventing it, which then causes irregular or non-existent periods. It affects over a hundred million women worldwide, making it the most common endocrine disorder in women of the reproductive age and leading and the leading cause of ovulatory infertility. Um, Polycystic ovarian syndrome is a bit of a misnomer. It is a collection of symptoms that may have different causes and might not even include um, polycystic ovaries. Uh, Was it 30% of women do have this 20% of women don't even have the cysts, but these are, these are the, um, the criteria Uh, insulin resistance, 
elevated uh, and androgens, which is the male hormones, mid-cycle or ovulatorial uh, pain. Uh, I don't know how to say that. Um, acne or oily skin, hair growth on the face, other parts of the body like the chest, male pattern baldness, unwanted weight ability to lose weight, obesity. Um, so I think you have to be a part of a couple of those symptoms and then the cysts kind of take it, like confirm it, confirm it. But some people don't even have the cysts. It sounds they like, um, like, they, like we have too much testosterone or something. Yeah. Well, I, I also, I, you can't see it cause I have a middle part, but I started finding like, I have two patches of missing hair and it's, oh, no. it's like what we talked about. I know that was actually the thing that motivated me. Cause I have like really painful periods. I have all this other stuff I thought. And I was like, that sucks. That sucks. I was like, the acne sucks. The oily skin sucks. The insulin resistance sucks. And then when I started seeing, I was missing pieces of hair. I was like, and we're going to the doctor. <laughs> um, so it's, it's like what we talked about. It's alopecia. So you can kind of tell because it's little circles, like little tiny circles of missing hair. So I would say it's like a fourth, the size, I would say it's a fourth of a penny. It's like that size. And then they're in like little circles. So you, like I said, you can't see anything and hopefully it'll grow back. But I was like, no, thank you. We are going to fix this. So oddly enough, I started reading this book, just being like, something is off. And then now I've kind of gone back to all the stuff that talks about polycystic ovarian syndrome. And I'm going to do this. It has like a six week uh, hormone balance protocol that I'm going to start um, hopefully at the end of June. But okay. I've, already, I've already cut some stuff out. Like I cut out caffeine. I just found out I probably have to cut out chocolate and that was really bumming me out. Um, and then, you know, most sugar and I've done all that shit before. I would so say the dietary, the six week thing is it's all about the diet. Mostly dietary. I would say it's like 70% dietary, but some of it is like lifestyle stuff. Okay. Um, and how's your, um, not drinking tea at all going for the urination. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, doctor. Um, I don't see a difference, Okay. but I am, I am handling not having tea physically fine. Like I, I don't feel like I need caffeine. I don't feel like I need anything. I don't feel, I just feel sad. Like, I just feel like it was my favorite part of the day. Yeah. And like, you know me, I love bubble tea. The base of bubble tea is tea. Um, and it's sugary. So I'm trying to avoid processed sugar. So I'm not saying it's enough forever. And then I was even looking up that like, maybe it's just about having one cup of like decaf tea, but somebody was just like, you can probably have black tea. And I was like, but I like the milk and I like the sugar and I'm just a mess. Well, it's the whole thing. I get it. I get it. I, I, could, I wouldn't be able to do without my morning cup of Joe, but, uh, it's just such a habit. It's such a, I mean, there was a time when I did give up coffee for a while and I did lose a lot of weight weirdly. And then like they explain it in, um, skinny bitch, why coffee keeps the pounds on, um, which has since been shamed out of existence, I think. And so, <laughs> but, uh, when I did cut coffee out, um, I did lose weight, but it's not worth it. Yeah. But I'm also, it's funny. I'm not really trying to lose weight or weight. Isn't the thing I'm like bloating is a part of this, which is, I, I didn't do mean to imply, like, no, no, no. I understand. No, I understand that. But like, that's, what's funny about it is almost everything is written towards weight loss, especially for women. And I am, I don't, I don't want to ever get diabetes. Um, I, I don't, I do have problems with my health that I want to control. And I can tell, like I said, like I knew something was off because I was having more painful periods and I like my skin was getting shittier and stuff like, like that. But it's like, what's funny is like, this thing has a whole thing about stress and I'm the least stressed I've ever been in my life. And then I was like, well, this is making me stressed. And like, yeah. you know what I mean? I was like, as soon as I saw that I was missing some hair, I was like, I'm stressed now. Yeah. <laughs> You can't like, this isn't fair. Like I felt like the most relaxed I've ever felt this week. And then I was like, this is bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Um, would you Google? Okay. So I Googled how, how do figure Spanish skaters go from like spinning slow to spinning fast? <laughs> okay. You, you ever seen them start slow and then it'll like speed up. Yeah. And I'm like, how do they do that? Cause you, you would think like the spinning is from the, from momentum. So if they're already slow, how do they then during the spin 
gain momentum? And the answer is very, um, it's physics, okay? Now I watched, <laughs> like the answer is physics. It's done. It's, it's, this is math as shit. And like, I, I wasn't, I was hoping for a simple explanation, but I didn't get it. Um, I watched this video. I like the idea that you're like, well, the ponytail loops within the sky. Something, yeah. Some, 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 some figure skating angel just spins you around. Just something easy, but this. Yeah. Whew, I watched this video and it was by this like, like, I don't know, she must have been 12, 13, 14 year old figure skater explaining this, the physics of it. And she's like, it's super simple. And it's a three and a half minute video of the most like difficult fucking equations. She's like, here it is, super simple. Um, <laughs> I was like, oh my God, she is shaming me. Um, it's the law of angular momentum conservation. So um, L equals R, M R times M times V, you know? I'll, I'll take notes. I yeah, no idea. L is angular momentum. <laughs> R is distance from mass to rotating axis. M is mass. V is velocity. So uh, if R is less, M is constant. Okay, so here's the thing. So when she goes into a spin, her leg kind of like, she leans and her leg goes out. And so the, um, the mass is bigger. And then in the spin, the formula changes and then the mass is smaller. But because... <sighs> so r if r is the distance right like so her leg is um being out and her leaning is making a bigger distance in the spin and then that gets smaller so when they 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 constrict that's smaller so when that happens when r is less but m is constant because mass doesn't change which is her wait i <laughs> that yawn I, must hurt every lecturer in college ever and <laughs> angular momentum is conserved because of the law uh, of angular conservation, then velocity must increase. So when you go from like bigger to smaller, your velocity increases. Um, you can increase the speed of the spin because of the moment, the moment I keep seeing bugs and there's no bugs and I'm, I'm starting to worry about my brain. You can increase the speed of the spin because of the moment of inertia and the conservation of angular momentum. And this girl's like, and like, she's saying it with like a smile. And you can increase the spin with like angular momentum. And she's like, it's super easy. And the equation for angular momentum when starting the spin is L equals R times M times V. And then the angular momentum when rotating in a spin or jump is L equals L omega, I omega. And so if the moment of inertia is less than the angular velocity is greater, <laughs> that's it. Yeah. And you just would be like, dude, I just want to have, I just want to feel wind in my hair. Like I just want the spinnies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was literally the most difficult thing, but I was like, I mean, what I took from it was that like, there's going to be, there's stuff in motion. And when you constrict that stuff in motion, you speed up. And, and which is, in, which is interesting. Cause I do, I still do this. Cause I did like, you had to do a little bit of ballet for, for gymnastics or whatever. So like, whenever I'm like, waiting around somewhere like I'm waiting for my sister to come out of a store I'm like on a sidewalk doing like spins and stuff but I always start like this and then I pull you know what I mean and then I go in tight so yeah. I go out I'm trying to think out pull your arms out and then and then in tight and then you just spin and then eventually you know I'm not I don't do this professionally so you fall in the asphalt yeah <laughs> I like that one um let's get personal yeah what's the best thing you've got from your parents I think my sense of humor because I think yeah. my dad my dad has like a, a very like sarcastic cynical sense of humor and then my mom is silly and just a little bit insane and I think a combination <laughs> of that <laughs> I, I really do think you're a combination of that just like the sarcastic <laughs> silly muppet of a human <laughs> and when they come together it really does I think that is what makes your humor unique is you're just like how is this a, like how are you both silly and in some way hurting my feelings <laughs> <laughs> sorry yeah <laughs> no and I, I probably would say the same for my parents like my mom's really funny like and sometimes I think she knows it and sometimes I don't think she knows it so I think both stylistically my mom is a ranter and I really only recently started realizing how much I am my mom in that fact like my parents picked me up from the airport this was like a year ago 
and my dad's driving my mom's in the passenger seat they're already bickering she was just like you know we would have been on time like just like literally out of a tv show you know and your father almost killed us and she's holding the oh shit bar she's like don't tell don't, no i don't grab it just to make you feel bad like and then she goes on the and she's like you should have saw last week we rented the grocery store we almost died in a fire like <laughs> My mom has not asked me how my flight is. My mom hasn't asked me who I am. And then you see how I treat you where you're just like, hey. And I'm like, oh my God. Da, 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 da. <laughs> you're like, well, I, I'm in jail and I was calling to see if you'd let me out, but I wanted you to finish your story. Um, <laughs> but genuinely, like my everything is everything is big. Everything is a rant. And I'm laughing hysterically because some of it I do know is true. And some of it is just my mom. Um, so I think that kind of rantiness but even just like I like she has a dark sense of humor, which I I definitely get from it. just like the most inappropriate thing at like the worst time. Yeah. And we're dying because you just should not say that. Um, my dad just has a great laugh. Like you have a great make, laugh. Yeah, my dad. We, I would say making any mealy laugh is very rewarding. Yeah, like. Like, like my mom is kind of a quiet laugher. She get like, she cries, she gets really squinty and she cries and she, she kind of shakes. But my dad is like, you know, like a cackle. And like, you, I remember as a little kid, like we would have to go to bed and then my parents would watch a TV show at night. And I could hear my dad laughing at a show he was watching with my mom. Like, that's one of like, weirdly my fondest, like missing out memories is that my dad is laughing without us. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever, you ever just hear yourself say something and you're like, oh my God, <laughs> I am just, just, oh, I'm my father. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, a, there's just like a factory of shahadas. Just like, we're, we're all the same, just, <laughs> just on down the line. If I had kids, they would sound like that. Like it's crazy. Yeah. No, it's, it's quite upsetting. Um, there's, there's tons of things. Like I would say I get my kindness from my parents. My parents are both very thoughtful, kind people. And like that kind of, um, do what you're supposed to do niceness like my, both my my two best friends from high school they've known these women since they were 14 years old just had babies this year and my dad you know and some of it's keeping like what else do you talk about with your parents but like i'd be i'd be like oh yeah amanda had her baby and he goes oh that's so great what did they name on what's her address let me send a card like you know my parents love to be a part of that and i think some of that's like that typical parent thing but some of it is like my parents are just thoughtful they're just nice thoughtful people and I feel very grateful as I get older that one I had nice parents and that I, I got that niceness from them because some of my friends are kind and I'm like how do you I've met your parents they suck like how did you turn out okay that's hilarious I feel like it's the opposite for me because I feel like my mom is super kind and like just like the, the biggest heart and I just like I'm nothing like her at all <laughs> <laughs> that's not true no I mean she's just such a sweet woman and I'm like I, I didn't get any of that it's I'm like all my father in that aspect I my punctuality I get from my dad um yeah like being able to like count on me to like I'm pretty good about like making sure if like so you gotta like take pills at like this time in this time like I'll make sure until I get into the habit I'll put an alarm but like that shit will get done you know yeah um, so like strong accountability and reliability yeah and, and quick to anger and <laughs> <laughs> yeah no I definitely <laughs> yeah I would say uh my 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 anger is uh definitely my mom I get that from my okay. mom the rage rage is my mom um somewhat thinking through my thoughts is my father um you know what I mean so it's weird it is sometimes weird to be like I have exactly both parts of my parents and like um I would say my drive and tenacity like my like I'm just going to do it. And I don't know how or why, like, that's definitely my dad. Like where like, somebody's like, what made you think you could do that? No idea. Nobody yeah. ever said I was funny. Nobody ever said I was talented. Nobody yeah. ever said you should try, you know, like you ever hear people's like starting out stories and they're like, yeah, I was the class clown or everybody said I was the funniest person in our group. Nobody said any of that ever. No, I didn't get any of that either. I don't know what the hell, I don't know how I got into stand up. It just was like, I should do that. And then I did, but yeah. And, but you like, you're more impressed because you did it like 16 in New York city. Like that's insane. But that's just that craziness. Like my, I look at my, my, both my parents' stories and I'm just like, you guys are batshit crazy. 
like oh, yeah. in, a, in like a cool way. But like, there's so much a part of my parents' life that I was like, you could have gave up at any point and people would have been proud of you. Like you didn't yeah. have to do as much as you did. I think like them wanting to come to America and like, you know, just like getting married, not knowing each other, batshit crazy. Yeah. Like going from one country into another. That's crazy. Like my dad, I don't think he spoke a lot of English when he got here. I mean, my mom spoke even less. Like my dad knew some, but they were both like my dad knew one person when he moved um, who he was counting on. And that person never showed up for him, like at the airport. <laughs> like, no. Yeah. yeah. So he just had to figure it out, you know, and he did. And he's resourceful. And I want to hold your dad. That, that would make that I would I would be a lost puppy. I'd be at the airport and I'd be like, Bill, <laughs> Billy. Yeah. And then my mom showed up with like all of her jewelry on her because it was too heavy in her luggage. So she was wearing like 70 necklaces. <laughs> my dad picked her up from the airport and he was like, what the fuck? <laughs> You're like, what is this Sprint Airlines or you can't check a bag? <laughs> Just wearing all her, all her jewelry. Oh, I want <laughs> pictures. Like I want, like, I see these so clearly where your dad's just like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I just like shimmering. Like <laughs> I'm not going to leave it at home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not going to come to America and not look cute as fuck. Like <laughs> <laughs> back when you had to look nice on planes too, I think. You know? Oh my God. Yeah. Nobody's wearing PJs and no. leggings. These people are in suits and, and Wow, that's got to be even funnier is that she's probably dressed really nice and then she has like 40 necklaces on. <laughs> I love that so much. My parents were telling me, so I mean, I'm sure not in a way to to make, not make fun of my parents, but like criticize my parents. But like, there's so much about how like you need to be close to your mother for the first couple of years of your life. And I was away from my mother from one to two. So I was, I was born in Ohio and then my mom was finishing up vet school and my dad was done and he went and got a job in New Jersey. So it was me, my older sister and my dad. And I, from one to two, I saw my mom three times. Wow. So yeah. So my mom, they were telling me there was these flights. Uh, I don't know if it was still true in the eighties, but definitely in the seventies, they were almost like buses. Like you showed up, you gave 50 bucks, you got on a flight and they would come back and forth from Ohio to New Jersey. Cause that's where my parents um, parents were, or at least dad and siblings were, but, but yeah, my, I saw my mom and this is before FaceTime. This is what, you know, and I think about how I probably saw my mom's face three times in, you know, when I, from one to two. That's crazy. Yeah. And then, and then when I think about how much I'm very much like my dad and I was like, yeah, how would, how would you fight it? Like, yeah. you know what I mean, like yeah. <laughs> I spent so much time with this man. Um, yeah, when she was around, you're like to your dad, you're like, who's this lady? <laughs> yeah. This is crazy. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I think about, I don't know, like even that, like you had a kid and then you were away from it. You were away from both. She was away from both her daughters for Teresa was, if I was one, Teresa was almost four, I guess. Like, that's pretty crazy to think about. And then my dad was living with my great aunt and great uncle, who I kind of consider like my grandparents and like, there's just so many, like, why did they agree to take us in? They didn't have to, like, I think about like, you, you know what I mean? You didn't have kids. You don't have to do this. <laughs> like yeah. sometimes, sometimes I see my aunt Donna, I was like, just say no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. I, 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 it is interesting. There's, there's a lot of stuff that I, I, there's a lot of stuff that I'll sometimes be like, oh my God, it's my dad. And I shake my head and I'm like, gotta, we're going to fix that. But there are so many things that my parents instilled very much not telling me just doing it that I am very grateful. And I see that more and more as I get older. And like I said, like when I hear stories about my friend's parents or I meet them and I'm just like, you guys suck. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like I have a friend, both her sister and her mom are awful people. And I'm like, you're not awful. Like, what did, did you, who influenced, was it a friend? You know what I mean? Did you just know not to listen to them? Like, how did you turn out to be just such a wonderful person when these people are like trash on top of trash? That is interesting. I'm trying to think if I have any friends like that, where I'm like, their parents sucked, but they're amazing. But like, I can't, most people I know have great parents too. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like, maybe it's just rebellion. It's like, I don't want to be like that, you know? True. Absolutely. And she has a very rebellious part about her. So that makes sense to me. Yeah. But 
Um, I would love to hear, I would love to hear if there's something unique people got from their parents. Like there's just something that you like never in a million years thought you would like be instilled with that. Um, maybe it's something, you know what I mean? Like you have similar handwriting to your parents. No, my dad. So both, both my parents being veterinarians, they, my dad very much has like doctor handwriting where like, I'm glad he doesn't write as many notes. Like he more types up notes now because I can't understand it. Like it's like the type, that type of thing where like it, it's script and, um, my mom, you know, that's not true. Um, uh, when they aren't writing in cursive, they write uh, capital letters. And I do that. I got that from my dad. Oh, okay. So that's actually like, interesting. It like, doesn't look the same, but that that's right. like, I learned to write in school, but like, I'll see their handwriting. I'm like, did I write that? Or did they write? <laughs> like, it's really weird. Yeah. Um, so like I said, so if they're writing print instead of cursive, I know, I guess I picked up that my dad always writes in capital letters. And most of, if I write you a card for the most part, it's in capital letters, like a serial killer yelling at you in a card. I'm like, happy <laughs> birthday. Like, <laughs> Are you in trouble? Know that got my me. Best friend. It's cool. <laughs> no, no, no. She's, she loves me. I know it sounds crazy. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, you can write to us at two non doctors at gmail.com. That's two non full word doctors at gmail.com. And we'll see you guys next week. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.